At the end of the day, this bugger is doing a few things and starting businesses that we're competing in. And um, competition breeds better products. Exactly. It just means we have to outcompete them. <laughs> and I welcome the competition. <laughs> conference you'll feel a lot more of that voluntarist libertarian spirit of we're going to liberate the individual and put them in charge of their own lives using technology i think that's what this conference is much more about and through, through using bitcoin cash in commerce and that's what it's all about if you can use your digital currencies to buy and sell anything anywhere in the world you have a much uh, much freer life at that point my goal had been to have bitcoin adoption happen so fast that it would be too late before the regulators even realized what happened but because of this whole scaling civil war, the entire adoption of cryptocurrencies around the world was delayed by several years. So we could have already had much more adoption around the world than we already do if we hadn't run into this silly scaling debate within cryptocurrency. So it's really, really frustrating to, to see how that's happened. But uh, anyhow, we can't change the past. We can only work to improve the future. And that's what we're here to do today. So an hour before your session, please come to the green room and okay. we'll have some makeup for you as well. Oh, I get, I get makeup too. We okay. wanted to make sure you look good. <laughs> Hi. Very nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Bitcoin cash pleasure. pins. Yeah, Bitcoin cash Symbol pins. for the world. Yeah. The, the subprint says money. free the market, free the world. Free the so. market, free the world. The world's best money. You guys want some too while we're at it? Or? Yeah, you want it. Oh, it's, a, it's a lapel pin. Yeah, there you go. Wow. Thank there you. you. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your set will be at 2.45. So, so if I can have you back at 1.45, maybe. An hour, okay. You can do that. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, bye-bye. Who needs a snack? It's crazy, yeah. They think just because it has the name Bitcoin, that it's Bitcoin, but it's not the it's not the name. It's what it actually is. Exactly. That and if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. It doesn't matter what you call it. The Bitcoin.com wallet. The number of transactions each day has been increasing. Um, there's far more Bitcoin Cash transactions than Bitcoin Core transactions from our wallet now. Yeah. So this is an ad. Coinbase is having to pay for ads. Well, here we are with the top natural yeah. results. So that, that's pretty good. And we actually made it so it only creates a Bitcoin Cash wallet by default now. If you want to make a Bitcoin Core wallet, you can still do it in the advanced settings. But okay. so there you go. You now have a Bitcoin Cash wallet. And so no, you, nothing in there. Well, nothing in there. We'll fix that. Hit the hit the receive button on the bottom row there. I'm gonna get something. Yep. So here we go. We'll send you some. It. So. I love it. This is yep, how so it works. Here, here we go. So we'll send five bucks, for example. Okay. Put some zeros behind it now. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll start with five bucks. <laughs> hey, man. So anyhow, someday it may be more. So again, the, the fee, the fee is zero point zero zero dollars. So the fee that. is actually going to be a point oh six percent, like a, a third of a Super penny or something. Already you it. already received it. Mike and Jake, maybe you met them. They speak Chinese. Mike's so good he can fool people on the telephone, so. Uh, anyhow, they're both right over here. This is Jake, the, I think you know Jake, his screen name is Beijing Bitcoins. Okay. If, and he runs a lot of the chat groups. Uh, you, you speak some Chinese as well then, or how many years total were you living over here? Five years. Five years? Might we take a photo? Sure, no problem at all. Ready? I think if we rotate, it'll, it'll be better, right? You guys want a snack or something? I, I, I need at least a little something to eat sure, before things start. Forward. And like the current exchange rate between dollars and yen right now, it's about 110 yen per dollar. Yep. But he brought out a one yen coin from right before World War II. And it was a one ounce silver coin, oh, wow. which meant that one yen used to equal one dollar, which was just <laughs> like really mind blowing. So it means the Japanese government inflated their currency even more than the US wow. government did. Wow. I have one left. Who, who wants the lapel oh, pin here, sir? You guys can. Thanks. Sure, here, I'll, I'll put it on for you there. I had, a, I had a pocket full of a whole bunch of them earlier this morning, but I gave uh, all but the very last one out there. So there you go. Good on you. Beautiful. Thanks. Thank you guys so much. So sorry, sorry. Feel bad I only had one left. But thank you guys.
how's the Bitcoin scene? And all the original places that started accepting Bitcoin in 2012, 13, 14, they're all switching to Bitcoin Cash. Oh, I'm putting the pink cow. The pink cow and two the dogs. The pink cow in Tokyo accepting Bitcoin Cash. Exciting. I enjoy your videos on YouTube. Oh, thank you. YouTube channel. Yeah, good work, man. Thank you very much. Like what you're doing. You've inspired us to do a lot of work with Bitcoin as well. Well, I'm glad so to hear that. 100% Bitcoin cash. It actually works as cash. Yeah. All right, nice to see you again. How are you guys doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, everybody, everybody's over here. Hey, great to see you. Cindy, oh. I've heard lots and lots and lots about you. Great to meet you. In fact, another guy in the lobby was just asking me about you if you're going to be here. And he wants Seriously. to. Seriously. Seriously. Wow, I'm so happy. From like Bitcoin Asia, I think he said the name of his group was. He wants more of our shirts, apparently. So we'll have to like see what we can do to get more shirts into him. So great to meet you in person, I think. So yeah, finally. Yeah, my hero. Thank you so much, Cindy. Thank you for your help. Thank you very, very much. Everybody loves to talk about compliance. Well, compliance is just another name for obedience. And you're talking about being obedient to people that aren't any more human than I am, so why should I have to obey them any more than they have to obey me? And so I think it's important to keep the underlying philosophy in mind when it comes to that. And at the end of the day, if you're not obedient to these people, they'll probably hurt you. So maybe for those reasons you should be obedient, but not because you have any moral obligation to be obedient to them whatsoever. So when you hear people saying compliance this and compliance that, just change in your mind the word compliance into obedience and you can understand what they're actually saying. Okay. Okay. I'm much more handsome than before, thank you. <laughs> Do you have a Bitcoin wallet already? No. <laughs> can I set you up with one and I'll send you a tip in Bitcoin Cash? Yeah. Yeah, good idea, right? <laughs> so it's Android or iPhone? iPhone? That's almost done making it. I'm sure you can read that better than I can. So, <laughs> I'm waiting. It says making a wallet, I think, right? And you will send a Bitcoin to me? Yeah. Really? Really. My first Bitcoin. Your first Bitcoin, right? <laughs> so now you have a Bitcoin Cash wallet. Okay. Hit the receive button right here on the bottom. Uh-oh, guys, we may have another problem. She just downloaded the app, and I want to send her her tip in Bitcoin Cash, and we're stuck with a loading screen forever. And this lady was so nice. Here you can see both of us in the king. She just did all my makeup for the conference here at CoinGeek. Yes. And I want to send her her tip in Bitcoin Cash and our wallet's loading here forever. Let's fix this in our wallet, please, please. So again, I'm gonna send 20 US dollars at the moment. The fee will be less than a penny to do that. So I'll hit slide to send. Uh-huh. Payment sent and you already received Ooh. it. There you go, just like that. So the money literally went from my phone to your phone. Oh. Our app didn't work too well. This one has it a little bit more fraction, fraction, but today it's $20. Today that might be worth as much as $1,000. So oh. don't lose it. Yeah, thank yeah. you for your twenty And thank, thank you I'm for the makeup. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the makeup too. I'm very excited to be here with you all, and uh, we're going to talk about Bitcoin Cash being Bitcoin, and we're going to make it cash again, just like it was in the earliest days. And if you're opposed to Bitcoin being used as cash, well, then you're opposed to Bitcoin. And it's not the fact that Bitcoin is called Bitcoin that makes it important. It's the fact that Bitcoin is usable as cash for the entire world in an uncensorable manner in which nobody can block your payments or freeze your account or control it in any way. It's those characteristics that make Bitcoin important. It's not the fact that it's called Bitcoin. And here we can see that from 2009 until 2017, Bitcoin was the best form of money to ever exist. And we list a bunch of the characteristics here that make money money, like being fungible, non-consumable, portable, durable, highly divisible, secure, easily transactable, scarce. And you can see that Bitcoin, the original Bitcoin, that's still alive and well in the form of Bitcoin Cash today, has more of those characteristics than any other form of money. But we'll need to be careful moving into the future. And it's worth pointing out that uh, the problems that we saw happen with Bitcoin Core, these weren't technological problems. These weren't technological failures. These were human failures. But guess what? Bitcoin Cash does scale. And that's why all of us are here today. And again, there's no CEO of Bitcoin Cash. There's no CEO of Bitcoin. 
It's just up to all of us to build businesses and to tell our friends and tell our family and help them get involved. So uh, the fact that you're all here at this wonderful Bitcoin Cash conference shows that you're motivated. So when you go home from this conference, make sure you set up your family and your friends and your neighbors with Bitcoin Cash wallets. There's a whole bunch to choose from. Um, of course, I love the Bitcoin.com wallet, but I love the other ones too. We have blockchain.info. We have Coinbase, which is a Bitcoin bank. And it's very important to distinguish between a Bitcoin wallet and a Bitcoin bank, but there's certainly places for Bitcoin banks. Coinbase has done a fantastic job of making it easy to buy or sell Bitcoin Cash all over the world. We can talk about the original investment strategy in Bitcoin. The first one is to buy some Bitcoin Cash, invest in some companies that help promote and make the currency uh, more useful, and then you can profit just by holding Bitcoin Cash as it becomes cash for the entire world. So what a fun thing to be able to do. You can earn money at the same time you bring more individual economic freedom to the world and you improve the lives of every single person on the planet by bringing more individual economic freedom to those people as you earn money at the same time. So it's really, really, really a, a fun, fun, wonderful thing when what's philosophically right and what's financially rewarding have such great synergy together. This ecosystem, this better world isn't going to build itself. It's up to us to go out there and do that. So. Uh, Please go out there and do that and tell your friends and family and uh, it's up to all of us. So thank you all so much for your time. Thank you. Bring him out again, the CEO of Bitcoin.com, Roger Burr. So uh, my background actually was in e-commerce. I ran an e-commerce website since, I don't know, 1999-ish or something. So a long, long, long time. And pretty much every single day we had people with stolen credit cards around the world trying to place orders on our website. And so I've seen firsthand what a pain it is to deal with fraudulent credit card transactions, what a pain it is to deal with the credit card companies that do the processing for you, and what a pain in general it is. And then when you suddenly have the ability to use Bitcoin for the first time, and you can receive a payment as a merchant from anybody anywhere in the world with no risk of fraud or chargebacks. Like, it's amazing, it's wonderful. And then on the other side of the coin too, I've had plenty of times as someone who travels a lot too, and unfortunately not everywhere is accepting cryptocurrencies, yet I still have to use a credit card sometimes. Right. And even actually just, uh, unfortunately earlier this week, there was something I, I couldn't buy with a <clears throat> cryptocurrency yet, so I was using the legacy credit card and they were declining it because they thought it was a fraudulent transaction because I'm in several different countries right. per week. Right. And so I've seen firsthand how big of a headache it is to deal with the traditional stuff mm -hmm. or having bank wire transfers blocked and all sorts of crazy things. Whereas with Bitcoin, you just send it and done. Or if you're a merchant, you just receive it and done. So uh, I'm sure online merchants and uh, you know, e-commerce websites are gonna be absolutely loving uh, Bitcoin Cash because it works uh, better than all the options that were available previously. So when uh, Jihan gave his presentation earlier today, it really brought back a lot of fond memories for me of the global Bitcoin stock exchange. I remember that website very clearly and remember being so excited about this because it was uh, one of the very first times we saw an unregulated by governments, yet regulated by the market, stock exchange forming. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking at the website pretty much daily and being excited as the volume was growing and there was more and more trading happening and more and more companies were being listed and it was so exciting. So I think from my point of view, I want to see more, and I don't think unregulated is the right word, but I wanna see more unregulated securities. When I say unregulated, I mean not regulated by a bunch of men with guns working in some capital somewhere that have no idea what us computer nerds are doing on the internet and have probably never used cryptocurrencies in their lives ever. I want to see these securities regulated by the market because at the end of the day, markets regulate things better than a bunch of politicians that don't even understand what it is they're regulating. And one of the things that Jihan touched on that again is so incredibly important is we're starting to see a market when it comes to regulatory jurisdictions where people can go and look at the 200 and something countries around the world and pick which one of those jurisdictions is the most suitable for whatever business they're trying to engage in. And now we're starting to see the you know, quote unquote regulators realizing that they have to compete with other regulators in this market for regulation. And I think at some point we'll realize that we don't need to have a monopoly uh, in regulatory agencies and we'll see a market develop for regulatory bodies that decide to regulate different businesses and the businesses will be able to decide which regulatory agency they want to be under and they'll be able to promote to their customers and say, hey, we are regulated by this 
institution, which isn't necessarily even a governmental institution. And then the customers of that institution will be able to decide, oh, this regulatory body has a fantastic track record of not allowing a bunch of scammy businesses to be under their policy. And this other one, they let anybody in there for 20 bucks. And so people, investors will feel more comfortable investing in businesses that are regulated, regulated by a particular regulatory agency. So I'm looking forward to seeing a market in regulatory agencies. And I think all of that's becoming possible now thanks to cryptocurrencies, and it's going to lead to a better outcome and a more efficient market for everybody. So it's really, really exciting seeing all of this uh, come yeah, back into yeah. existence. I don't recall exactly the first time I met Jihan. I, I think maybe it was in Beijing at, at a dinner that was arranged. Um, but he was just this, you know, little tiny, unassuming Chinese guy. <laughs> and uh, it was really interesting when, when I found out that, uh, and a lot of people may still not know this, but uh, Jihan was the first person in the entire world to translate the Bitcoin white paper into Chinese. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, Craig, I, I don't know all that well yet, but I'm getting to know him better. And I remember one of the very first times we had dinner together. It's not often you get to sit across the table from somebody that knows so many different things about so many different topics. And my background is primarily in, in economics. And uh, Craig knows a heck of a lot about those sorts of things, too. And I can sit there and at least I can keep up and follow what he's saying on those topics. <laughs> and then when he moves on to other topics, you smile or not. I just kind of have to sit there and try to absorb as much as I can and, and hope to keep up. And it's not too often you get to meet people in life uh, that know so many different things about so many different topics. So uh, thank you for teaching me so many things about so many topics. And thank you for bringing Bitcoin to China, Jihan. Great. Uh, if I'm going to succeed, then basically screw the trolls. Um, and I saw that from Jihan. No matter how much shit they threw at him, he kept going. And this uh, From this guy, um, I sort of initially approached Roger back in uh, 2012. I had an idea, um, and I probably have learnt to get other people to do my communications for me because I wrote Roger a, uh, a few emails and, and basically said, Mt. Gox is shit, um, we need to make a better exchange, I have technology, and just kept blasting a few things at him until I got sick of it, and that went nowhere. Um, <laughs> Roger, I don't blame you. <laughs> so the first thing I've learned there is um, to get other people, especially like Jimmy and things like that, um, to act as a filter between me because well, I've got a sort of different type of personality. <laughs> and there's a thousand and one different cryptocurrencies out there. And at the end of the day, the market will decide which one they're going to use. And it's our job here in this room and everybody else that's involved to make sure that Bitcoin Cash is the one that's the most useful for the most people around the world to use in commerce. And at the end of the day, this bugger is doing a few things and starting businesses that we're competing in. And... Um, Competition breeds better products. Exactly. It just means we have to outcompete them. <laughs> and I welcome the competition. <laughs> Why don't we get a group of like 20 people? Everybody up on stage. Yeah, everybody. You recommend choosing wisely. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give the red one a try. One yeah, the future it up. one is for the past. Yes. I'm going to put this on you. Okay. You better I'll... take it now. Uh oh. And please follow her. For you. Thank you. Enjoy your night. It's not red. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much.
So I'll hit slide to send and this part will be much, much faster. And so we'll wait one second for it to finish creating the transaction, sent, received, Boom. just like that. That Fourth. is pretty bad. And today it's 20 bucks. Someday that could become worth a thousand bucks as Bitcoin Cash becomes more popular. That's so. Cool. And did I tell you, I told Andrew, but did Andrew tell you my plan for Purse and St. Kitts? So St. Kitts, the entire population is 50,000 people. Yeah. Everybody shops on Amazon. Yeah. And like St. Kitts is not as wealthy as the United States. So like, it means even more to these people to save 20%. Yeah. I already imported, they're physically there and ready on the island for Bitcoin Cash ATM machines. And the government's freaking out because they're having a hard time getting money into the country for their citizenship program because the US is blocking the wires with the correspondent oh, banks. Really, yeah. If only there was an uncensorable yeah, payment method they, they could accept, method. right? So we're gonna make this full cycle thing where the government accepts payment in Bitcoin Cash yeah. for citizenship. Then the government sells the Bitcoin Cash back to the citizens through the ATM machines who then spend it on purse yeah. to buy their Amazon. Yeah. And we have the full circle. Yeah. And so that's, I'm waiting on you guys to launch yeah. this. Yeah. And actually I couldn't be there in person, but right now today they're having a citizenship by investment conference in St. Kitts. Bitcoin.com is the platinum sponsor of that. Yeah. So like it's, I'm waiting on you guys to finish your Bitcoin Cash integration to really launch that. And I think we can tip the entire country to being like predominantly using Bitcoin Cash. That's how big of a deal this will be.